a young doctor on a mission. During 160 days of each year, he shares a tiny cabin with two colleagues and travels through the Amazon. Lucas Rocha Kanamori has had a wish all his life. When I was a child, I wanted to be able to treat I always wanted to be a doctor as a child. When someone was hurt at home, I would rush to them with my doctor's kit and put plasters on them. I've always looked after and cared for other people. It's just the way I am. With the hospital ship, Lucas brings health to the most remote corners of the Amazon, to places where diseases such as leprosy, yellow fever and tuberculosis are still common. For many residents, the ship is vital. It's their only shot of getting medical attention. The small heart is very strong. The Brazilian Amazon is almost 15 times the size of Germany. Three million people live in native riverside communities, often without power and running water. When they get sick, the next doctor is often several days away by boat. But there is hope. The Oswaldo Cruz, a military ship on a peaceful mission and with one objective. The crew wants to provide medical care at least once to every remote village every two years. Four young doctors, all freshly graduated, take care of the poorest in their country for one year. Lucas has been travelling with his colleagues for 30 days. He is proud of the fruits of their labour. We've already been able to help many people. In total, we received 2,000 patients during our working hours. I think we were of great use for them. The ship doesn't only bring the doctors to the villages. It's a floating hospital and much bigger on the inside than you'd think. Equipped with everything you need for a medical checkup in the jungle. A dental practice decoration for the little ones an X-ray room and even a laboratory to analyse blood tests. For the first time in his life, Lucas is treating patients without more seasoned doctors by his side. Something that the 26-year-old found intimidating at first. I was afraid of being alone in the clinic, but now I'm happy to have my three colleagues with me. If something isn't fully clear to me, we exchange ideas and discuss difficult cases as a team. My biggest fear was precisely that, not knowing what to do with a seriously ill patient. After sunset, the Oswaldo set sail. The rest of the night, Captain José Duarte manoeuvres the hospital ship through the Rio Tapajos, one of the largest tributaries of the Amazon. At dawn, they should be arriving at the community of Cajutuba. As the crew steers the ship out of port, the medical team meets up for a briefing. There are a total of four doctors, four dentists, seven nurses and a pharmacist on the ship. There will be electricity in the area tomorrow, but with limits. If we connect too many devices at once, the power won't hold. But we can bring with us the most important devices, like our scales. We'll also have a cell phone signal there. The more resources the doctors have available, the easier it is for them to care for others. From previous missions, the Navy already knows the coordinates of the communities and has a rough idea of what to expect. However, sometimes the expectations don't match reality. We've come across completely different situations. Communities change and they may not be where they used to be. Sometimes the communities move because the river has changed or because the tide has risen. Tomorrow morning, Lucas and the other doctors will find out if their preparation was correct or not. Sunrise at the Rio Tapajos. As the Oswaldo Cruz sails for the community, the crew is woken up in traditional military fashion. Bom dia, Candiru da Amazônia. At the rhythm of a classic Brazilian tune. Tall 
breakfast is ready at seven sharp. The first and last chance for Lucas and the team of doctors to recharge their batteries for the day, just as their mission is about to begin. I hope we can provide a good service today and that there aren't that many complicated cases. But we're all good. In the meantime, the Oswaldo cruise arrived at its destination. The doctors have to cover the final stretch to the mainland in a motorboat since the ship can't dock on this shore. This moment is always the most exciting for Lucas. How many people are there at the community centre? How will the residents receive them? And what kind of cases do they expect today? The Brazilian Navy tries to reach every small village in the Amazon at least every two years. No matter how remote, they announce the visiting hours by telephone beforehand. It seems to have worked today. At 8 o'clock in the morning, 80 locals are waiting patiently for the doctors. Lucas is relieved. This is a best-case scenario. People came here before the visiting hours because we were able to inform the community about our visit. They welcomed us and even helped us set up a few tables and the rest of what we need. Lucas and his colleagues are expecting around 140 patients today. A normal amount on a working day, but not every visit is as organized as this one. We visited a community that hadn't been visited by a doctor in 10 years. There was an improvised nurse in the village, but no health center with medication. We had to stay for two days to see all the patients in the line. Intestinal parasites are widespread across the Amazon region. The doctors travel with common medications such as antibiotics, painkillers and vitamin preparations in their luggage. Hello, I am Lieutenant Daniel. I'm the dentist of the ship and we're with the medical team of the Brazilian Navy. The order in which the residents are treated is well organized. First the old, then the pregnant women, then mothers with children, then the rest. In the meantime, the hospital ship is indispensable for the residents of Cajotuba. I remember when the first ship came five years ago. Everyone was amazed at first because they'd never seen anything like it. Many were scared as well because they didn't know what it was. But then word got around and today we know that it's a good thing and helps our health. Since then, it's become normal to see them and we get to look after our health when the ship comes by. Two nurses take over the first checkups. Blood pressure, height, weight and blood sugar levels. Diabetes is widespread in the Amazon region. The experience isn't only unusual for the patients, it also is for Lucas. I was expecting two very different things. On the one hand, the terrible heat, and on the other hand, the people's openness. I expected everything to be much tougher than it is. But the communities along the river have welcomed us with warmth and keep an open mind. That makes the work easier than expected. Ten months ago, Eliana gave birth to her daughter. Today, the two of them are waiting for their first examination after birth something that would be unimaginable to us. Lucas tries to dedicate a lot of time to each of his patients. He's well aware that the next ship won't be back for another two years. What seems to be the problem? I have heart problems. And how do they feel? I have high blood pressure. And the high blood pressure was sudden? Yes. Ilyana's father had been previously diagnosed with high blood pressure. Ilyana has had problems since the birth of her daughter. Now, she isn't only worried about her heart, but also about her child's health. Her little heart is very strong. A number of other tests await Ilyana. Her blood has to go to the ship laboratory for analysis and she gets an appointment for a heart examination on the hospital ship. 
I am very happy that the doctors are back. We weren't expecting it at all. We can now have examinations carried out that we would otherwise not have access to. For the crew of the hospital ship, treating patients isn't the only responsibility. Disease prevention is just as important. While the doctors hold their visiting hours, the nurses visit the village school. It's of special importance children learn from an early age how to protect themselves from infections. Disease prevention is an important part of this mission. If an illness appears in the villages, it's very hard to treat it because we rarely come by. That's why preventing diseases is all the more important for us. There's a simple reason why nurses teach the children about hygiene. They tell their parents and grandparents what they learned. That's how the entire village is educated. The caregivers playfully break the ice and hand out prizes to the winner, a toothbrush set. And then it starts. Daily routine for us, washing our hands and brushing our teeth. These things have to be taught by the nurses in the river. And they hope that they make a habit of it in the Amazon. Back to the hospital ship. The Oswaldo cruise not only brings the doctors to the patients on the river, it's also a mobile clinic. Unlike most communities, the military ship has a steady power supply. In the case of Iliana, the doctors on the ship can examine her heart without a problem. And other services are only possible on the Oswaldo Cruz. Many of the villagers are waiting for dental treatment on the ship. While we would get to go to the doctor for a toothache on the same day, it often takes up to two years for the next dentist to visit the Amazon villages. Eliana is finally allowed to have her heart examined in the operating room. With an ECG, doctors improve their likelihood of discovering where her problem is coming from. This is a routine examination. We usually do these three or four times during our visiting hours. Eliana will soon find out whether her heart is in good shape. The doctors also examine her blood in the ship's laboratory. In the middle of the Amazon region, the Brazilian Navy crew can carry out all the important tests they would also be able to do in a hospital. We're finished. That's it. You can get the results from the doctor over there. Back in the church, Lucas listens to Iliana's heart again. Her husband also finished his work early to find out how Iliana was doing. But Lucas finds nothing out of the ordinary. All values are okay. Iliana goes home feeling relieved. I feel good because the tests came back negative for bacterial infections. In general, the residents of Cajutuba were healthy today. The biggest problems were physical pains and indigestion. The most important part of our job is to give patients advice and educate them about what they have. Many are anxious and have no idea what's wrong with them. Is it something bad or nothing to worry about? It's important that we can tell them exactly what's happening to them and calm them down. After eight hours of work in the tropical heat, the doctors are finished. They've managed to successfully treat all patients in the community today. But that doesn't mean they're done just yet. As the hospital ship heads for the next community, the young doctors discuss their cases and learn from one another. 
Again and again, Lucas meets patients he can't forget easily. And there's something else that makes him sad today. People asked me today, when are you coming back? And I had to tell them I didn't know. It's hard for me, but still. Nevertheless, I'm very happy we got to be there at least once. And I'm glad I was able to help these people. Lucas and his colleagues will be working on the hospital ship until February, until they are replaced by the next team of young doctors. Their mission, to help people in the most remote corners of the Amazon.